Hi, welcome to the Sassy Spoon Kitchen. So today we're going to do something special. Uh, it sounds very involved and it, it has a few steps, but it's really delicious and fun and uh, I think you're going to really like it. Now, it involves a special piece of equipment found in most Mexican kitchens called a mocajete. And this is what it is. Um, it's usually made of a lava stone, but nowadays they make them out of a compromised, uh, not compromised, um, composite material. It looks still like the original lava stone, and um, I bought this one. All right, I got this one in cooking school in Mexico. I've had, I have several other ones. I have about, I think, six of them, and I use them in my cooking school in Chicago. But um, we're gonna heat this up on my gas stove, and there are other ways to heat it. You can heat it in the oven. You can also heat it on the grill. And why we're gonna heat it is because we're gonna cook all these other foods uh, that we're gonna put into it. And um, when once we cook them, then we put them all together in it. And um, it, when this is hot, it holds the heat really well. And we serve it at the table side, hot, bubbling hot. And it really is delicious. Uh, the things that we're going to put in it are going to be really fun. Now you can do a mixed style, which has different meats or even vegetables. You don't have to have meat. Um, but tonight we're just going to do a steak in ours with some vegetables. And one of the main things we're going to do at the bottom of it are the pales, which are cactus paddles. Now here we have the raw one that hasn't been, um, it has had some of the stickers taken off of it. This is the way I buy it in the grocery store. Now we can't grow these here. If you live in zone nine, 10 or 11, you can grow them. So like down in Charleston or in Hawaii, we could grow them or California, we had them everywhere. But um, here we're in zone seven, so we can't grow them. Now I'm gonna try and get this really close and see if you can see these fine little hairs, like right here. Oh, there's stickers. And those are really, really fine hairs. And when you buy them, sometimes they're in and sometimes they've been cleaned. Now, what you want to be real careful of is if you get those in your skin, uh, the best thing to do is chew a piece of gum <laughs> and stick your finger uh, with the gum and try and pull it out. But um, they're usually pretty easy to take out. So, um, but you can buy them already prepared. The big paddle like this, this is a immature paddle. They come really big, but usually you don't buy them really big. Um, this is usually about the size they come in. Now this one I've already cleaned. I've cut off all of the stickers and all the little nubs that are attached to the stickers. And um, so there's kind of a gel surface on them. And once you cut into them, kind of like an aloe vera. And actually they're very, very, very healthy for you. And they're healthy in the raw state, but they're kind of gummy, like it has like a okra sort of gel. But once you cook them, that goes away. And um, you can either cook them very little or a very lot. Anything in between, they are kind of, uh, they have that gummy stuff coming out of them. But we're gonna grill them for this uh, recipe that we're doing. But then if if you um, cook them for a long time, which I'm only gonna cook one for this recipe, and the, I have three. The other two, I'm gonna cook them, I'm gonna cut them up and, after I grill them, and then I'm gonna cook them some more after they're cut up, and I'm gonna use them for tacos. Those are really good. They're kind of citrusy and they're um, very, very healthy, as I said. Now, any of these little brown spots, um, maybe this one right here, I'll cut out. 
and definitely this one right here I'll cut out. Now I'm just gonna show you how to clean them and how to take these little stickers off. I've already done two of them, so it's it's kind of a long, not a really long process, but it does take a little bit of work. It's not hard, and you can usually, if you have a Mexican store near you, a Hispanic store, you can usually buy them already done. Now, because we have a little brown spot there, I'm gonna cut around it. The first thing you do is go around the edges like that. And also, you wanna cut off that thicker end stem where they cut it off of the cactus because it's kind of tough. And like I said, you can usually buy them already cleaned and cut up in little pieces. And that's really a nice way to get them the first time you get them because if you're gonna make anything with them, you can do all kinds of different dishes with them. But um, you don't have to go through all this process. However, they really stay nice and fresh like this if you buy them in the big pieces. So then you just kind of, sh what I call shaving them. You take your knife and you just go like this. We go back the other way. You see, you get all that little brown stuff off of it. It does take a few times going back and forth. It doesn't take a long time, but you're getting all that brown, those little nubs off of it. And it takes off the stickers and also the bed of the sticker which is brown and doesn't take too long to get it off and then you wash it after you do that and then you either grill it or cook it on a stove until it becomes tender and I'm gonna grill these you can go ahead at this point and chop them up And cook them on the stove too but we're gonna because we're what we're gonna do is uh, cook them whole and then we're gonna probably cut them into thirds for for what we're gonna use them on and um, we're gonna lay them into the mocajete and then you with the mocajete you'll see how I do it but with the mocajete you pull pieces of meat and vegetables and avocado and green onion and all different things out and you just choose whatever you want and it's full of um, really delicious salsa and you just pull things out of it and put it on tortillas and then you can just munch on it or you can just put it on your plate and eat it with a fork if you're not eating carbs whatever you want just really delicious i have some steak marinating that i put um in a marinade of lime and lots of black pepper and a little maple syrup mostly lime and black pepper so see it wasn't that hard to really scrape those off now i'm just going to rinse this before i put it on the grill so I'm gonna go start my fire, and I'm also going to put these vegetables here on the grill. These are the vegetables I'm gonna use for my salsa. And I have tomatoes, a jalapeno, some onions, some garlic, and some green onions. The green onions are actually not gonna be for the salsa. These are gonna be uh, for the mocajete. And some little small tomatillos. It's a red salsa, so the tomatillos are just for flavor. And I'm gonna be taking those out to the grill also after I clean up this bit of uh, cactus. <laughs> the nopales are a little messy once you scrape all this off, but it's not too bad. And then all that slime goes away when you cook them. So I will see you back at the grill in a little bit. Okay, here we are out at the grill. I've got the nopales and tomatoes, avocados, onions, green onions, stuffed jalapenos, tomatillos, garlic, all going. I'm about ready to take the garlic off and the tomatillos off. They're on a, gar on a grill pan, as are the um, 
stuffed jalapenos with the cheese. And then um, I, I think the tomatoes are about done too. And I'll take the avocados off. I brushed the avocados with a little olive oil. And they're, they just are going to be on there for another minute. Just want to let you know what's going on out here. Okay, we have the meat sizzling away here. And um, as I think I said before, it is just a uh, tough brown steak that's cut up and marinated in um, lime with lots of black pepper and a little bit of um, maple syrup. And then over here on this one, we have a fire going under our mocajete and it's nice and hot. I'm going to turn it over in a minute and keep the fire going. This is one of the shelves from my air fryer. You can use any kind of rack you want or like I said you can put it in the oven and heat it up in there or you can also put it on the grill. You can heat it any way you want. So I'm going to let this meat get good and crispy on the, in, in the cast iron skillet and uh, next we're going to make our salsa it's salsa time okay so these are our grilled vegetables now you can make salsa doing the vegetables by boiling them or by using a grill pan or by even using just a iron skillet on your stove or by putting them under the broiler it each offer different flavor balances because if you grill them you get a little bit of char taste which is my favorite preference but by boiling them you also get a more cooked flavor uh, especially with your tomatoes um, so anyway you can do it any way you like I'm pref I prefer the grilled flavor so you can do this with tomatoes or with other vegetables um, to make red or green sauces I put some tomatoes in my red uh, salsa, um, and by also by charring them, it makes the skins almost totally fine to eat. If you um, boil, you generally need to peel them or strain them. So also the peppers here, I'm gonna take the end of the peppers off. I have one jalapeno and one serrano pepper. And I take those off. And then I left the skin, put them in whole with the seeds. Now, if you want it less spicy, you can use just jalapenos. Um, for four tomatoes, I generally use two peppers. And also, if you, if you uh, are concerned about the skins, you can easily peel them off. I can show you here on the serrano pepper you can see how the skins are really ready to come right off. If you use a larger pep pepper, like an Anaheim chili, which is even the mo probably the most mild chili there is, um, you definitely want to peel the skin off because those bigger peppers have thicker skins and they're more bitter. Also the tomato, I usually leave the skins on when I put them on the grill. If I'm just boiling them, I take the skins off immediately before I even put them on. And I cut that little stem end off. You see the little tiny seeds in there? Those are gonna, they're real um, tart in flavor. A lot of people think they're green tomatoes or not at all. I'm growing these in my garden this year. I'm real excited. I have lots of plants. They already have fruit on them. The fruit are real tiny right now. But I do have fruit on them. So you take that little husk off. Um, you can take the husk off before grilling them too, but you see they still get charred through this with the husk on. And these are really tiny ones. They come in two sizes in the Hispanic grocery stores, but um, you can buy them large or small. They still have pretty much the same flavor. And if I'm doing an all green salsa, then it obviously has Oh, all green tomatoes, it won't have a tomato in it. Now the garlic, I also leave the um, paper on the garlic and most of that will just kind of burn off. It's real easy to take off. You just hold your knife down and it just comes right off. 
and the garlic becomes really sweet when you grill it like this. It's really lovely. I do keep those on a grill pan. Both the, the small tomato teals and the garlic I keep on a pan on the grill. But obviously if you're boiling, you can just stick them right in the water. On a grill, if you're doing it on a, um, a frying pan, no need. We also are using one lime. We'll put the juice of one lime in. And we're going to use some cilantro. The onion, I did take the skin off before I grilled it. Because you can do the same thing with that. You can leave the skin on it, take it off when you put it in the blender. And these sauces, because the vegetables are cooked, the sauces um, can stay fresh for a week or so if they last that long at your house. Uh, might maybe even a little longer. The lime will give it a little acidity, and as well as the tomato and the tomato too has acid in it. So that'll help it stay longer. But we use it on a lot of things, so it doesn't last very long at our house. Now this one will be a little spicier than one I made last week for something else. But we we make these all the time. Okay, salsa roja coming up. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my cilantro and my lime. And after we mix this up, we're gonna add a little bit of seasoning. Put in some cumin and some Mexican oregano and some salt. And this will be hot because these vegetables are still warm, which is also really nice to serve it warm. Um, it's kind of really nice if you make your tortillas hot and dip them in there, it's really good. All right. So, the lid on it. cilantro is fine. We'll just mix that down in there and um, see how it tastes. All right. Okay, I tasted it. It does need a little salt and pepper, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Some sea salt. A little crushed black pepper. Sounds like this is almost empty. I'm going to have to fill that. And we're going to put a little cumin, I would say about um, half a teaspoon of cumin. It's kind of a strong flavor. But that represents northern Mexico flavoring. And then this is um, Mexican oregano. If you can't find it, you can use majorum. And I, I like to do this when I put it in because they leave little sticks in there sometimes and bigger leaves. So I kind of like to grind it up in my hands. It's very different from European oreganos, so don't substitute European oreganos for that. All right. We are ready to let it mix up for one last time. want it to be chunky like this. So this creates a quite a seal. You have to release it a little bit. Alright. Now I'm gonna taste it for the last bit of flavor, see if it needs anything else. This is a chicharrón, which is from the butcher, the carniceria. 
Hmm. Okay. So, got a nice kick, but not too much. That's just perfect. So we're gonna be ready to use this in our mocajete, and we'll still have some left over. Probably use about half of it in the mocajete. So, we're off to the races. Back in business, I moved it over to my plate. So then we have chicharrones here. We're gonna just crumble a few on top. Those are always good and crunchy. And last but not least, we have some avocado. These chicharrones are from the Carsarina, where I bought my meat. Okay, and we, oh, we have, I forgot, we had some green onions here. And the avocado is grilled, so that'll be tasty on the tortillas. Lime on there. The hot tortillas are already set at the table and they're ready to go. And I'll bring some more salsa over there too. That's one hot, juicy bowl of deliciousness. That'll serve two people comfortably. Believe it or not, I do know some people that can eat one and by themselves. <laughs> but you can also do this. Um, the mixta form has chicken and shrimp, as well as beef, sometimes pork too. Um, I think you'd need a bigger <laughs> container for all that. But um, as you can see, it's bubbling away. It's nice and hot. Um, maybe you can't see that part, but anyway, um, it's delicious. I'll serve this with a big spoon and um, everybody can dig away at it, two of us, <laughs> and uh, we'll serve it with our tortillas. Hope you try it. Thanks for watching. Be sure and click like and subscribe. Bye.